so weird because I live like right on a highway and I feel like everybody can see me when they drive by. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I figured we'd do a little sit down video outside because I guess we're outside all the time on this channel, but I feel like my sit down videos are always just inside and it's boring and it's so beautiful out this morning. So I figured I would uh, do this outside. Okay, so today we're doing, oh Jesus, what was that? Okay, we're doing a Q&A because you guys know I don't hardly ever do Q&As because nobody asks me any questions. So this is like a cumulative collection of questions from over time that I found in my videos, but I figured I would sit down and answer some of them on camera with you guys in case some of you have the same questions. So, I also haven't filmed any, so we'll just get started. I don't think this will take very long, but will you get more horses in the future? Um, yes. Most definitely will buy more horses in the future. I've never planned on stopping <laughs> buying horses, and that probably is not a healthy thing, but um, I think after Sarah, I probably am going to take a little break from Project Horses for a while. Um, Luna, she's still like a project, but like, she's not a horse that I'm, I want to have like a specific time frame for, like Sarah and Chloe have been. Um, I'm just going to kind of take my time with her and just let her develop as she is. And... Yeah, I just, I kind of want to take a break from projects after Sarah and just like focus on my horses. My horses haven't been ridden much this year, like not near as much as I'd like, but I just want to focus on them, enjoy them and ride them and not have to worry about a project horse and getting it done on time and having a time frame to sell it, which I don't like to do that anyway. Um, I don't stick to that super strict. But it is nice, like, especially this year, like, I really want to have Sarah sold by winter just for, like, hay expense reasons because it's been such a bad year for hay. And, um, actually, I have a friend working with her right now. Um, I'm paying one of my friends to work with her once a week for me, Melanie. I'm sure you guys know Melanie. And, um, she's working with her once a week, and I'm going to be working with her once a week still, as usual. But just with school starting up at my job and my other horses and trying to buy hay. Um, I don't want to have to stress about her not getting worked with. So my friend Melanie is just working with her like once a week. Um, some groundwork. <laughs> she actually, oh, I told you guys this in a vlog. Um, she got bucked off of Sarah on accident. So they're starting with groundwork and they're going to work their way up from there. But hopefully I do want to sell Sarah with Melanie being able to ride her because if I'm the only person that's ever ridden her like she might I might sell her and she might go home and buck that person off because she hasn't been ridden by anyone but me so I do want Melanie to be able to ride her and you know have somebody different on her back anyway we just went on a tangent can you make a video about confidence around horses so this is a really hard one um I've thought about this one and I can definitely make a video for tips on how to be confident, but your confidence is really something that's so individual for everyone. Like, I can't just tell all of you guys how to be confident because I don't know what's making you not confident. I mean, it's so different for everybody. Everybody develops differently and learns differently and takes more time than other people. So I can't, I can't just make a broad video saying, Everybody, this is how you be confident around horses because you're all so different. You're all struggling with different things that are not, that are, how do I want to put it? Depressing your confidence. So I can definitely make a video on tips, but that's why like in lessons, um, people really like individual lessons so much better than group lessons because every everybody's struggling with something specific and your trainer can actually focus on what you're struggling with rather than a group. Okay, this was on my camping videos and somebody asked what's the name of the campground that I stayed at. Um, so in my camping series with Sarah, um, we went for a two day camping trip if you haven't seen it. Um, I stayed at the River Valley Horse Camp in Farmington, Iowa. 
So it's a really, really nice horse camp. They've got stalls you can rent. They've got a really nice bathroom facility. Um, their campsites aren't very big or like super kept up by any means, but like the point of staying there is to be on your horses doing activities, not sitting at the campsite. They've got a big wash rack. They actually had a farrier there. So my friends that I went with were actually able to go get their horses new shoes while we were there. Miles and miles of trails. They've got three arenas, an obstacle course, and I actually got a schedule. I got a schedule while I was there for the rest of the year and they literally have something every weekend. They have like a show every weekend, they have roundups, they have rodeos, um, a trail ride, and yeah, they're always, they're always hosting something like every weekend. I actually wanted to go there back in May. They were doing this um, benefit ride for St. Jude's weekend trail ride. And yeah, unfortunately we weren't able to go, but yeah, they do have some trail rides still this year. So I really want to go back there. At the campgrounds, they have a facility to stall your horse for the night. How do you find places like this? They are few and far between, that's for sure. Um, I think there's like three or four different equestrian campgrounds in Iowa, but yeah, they're all pretty far away from me anyway. That's why when I go, I like to go for one or two nights like to make the drive worth it. Um, but really, you can probably just search like equestrian campgrounds in your state or equestrian campgrounds comma Iowa and find some. River Valley is actually right next to another campground called Shimmick and Shimmick is like just primitive camping so it's no campers just like tents and stuff so you can camp there if you want to just tent camp or if you have a camper then you can go over to River Valley because their trails like mix together um, but there's also Bushy Creek and I think Brenton Tim I don't know if Brenton Timber lets you camp there or not. But yeah, I just would search online or if you have um, Facebook groups. I know Facebook's like totally not a thing anymore for some reason. I'm still on Facebook every single day, like all the time. But I love Facebook. But on Facebook, there are different groups. I'm a part of two really big groups. One is the Iowa Hitching Post and one is the Quad Cities Equine Classifieds. And there's like thousands of members in these groups. So I just, whenever I have like questions about stuff like that, I'll just go onto those groups and ask and people will respond places they've been. And sometimes there's even places just like a state away. Like we're not that far from Illinois. So if I wanted to camp in Illinois, I could just go over there. Although your horses do have to have Coggins for that. But yeah, the campgrounds pretty much always provide stalls that you can rent. Sometimes they're more expensive than others. Um, at River Valley, you could rent a stall. You could rent a little, a little dry lot, like a, I don't remember, like a 30 by 30 dry lot or something like that. Or you could tie your horses free of charge. So um, any of those you could do. Do horses need a certain amount of grain? That was on my how to feed your horse video or feeding your horses 101. Um, and honestly, there's no answer to that question because it all depends on the horse. Literally all depends on your horse. Just They're just like people. They all have different metabolisms, different eating habits, different, like they're all just different. They're all their bodies are different. Um, Luna gets way more grain than Sarah needs. Um, but when Sarah is on a dry lot, I give her more grain for nutritional value and energy than when she's on pasture. So it really all depends how much you're working your horse, your horse's metabolism, your horse is built. Yeah, all kinds of things. Genetics. What do you use to edit your videos? I just use iMovie. Um, before we got iMovie, I used Wondershare from Mora. Um, which was a pretty good editing app and then there's one other editor I'm trying to think of what it was called 
I'll put it down here, but I've used that on a few videos. My dad bought that for me. I downloaded it into my computer, two computers actually, and both of them died and crashed. And I don't know why, it worked really well. I don't think it had anything to do with the editor, but both those computers crashed. And so I don't know if I ever get another laptop, if it'll let me download that one back onto a computer. I might have to like call the company or something, but I really like that one. Um, and my dad paid a decent amount of money for it. So hopefully I can get that to work. How do I get my horse to walk on a lead when he's being stubborn? Okay, so when people ask me questions like this, my answer always is make the wrong thing hard and the right thing easy. And you guys have probably heard that a million times from different horse trainers, but that is the best way I can explain it. When he's, your horse is doing something wrong, keeps doing it, won't stop doing it, make it hard. Make him not want to do that anymore. When we went to River Valley, I talked a little bit about this in my second day video. Sarah just decided that um, she was tired and she was just gonna stand in one spot and not listen, not steer, not move, and not do a damn thing. And uh, I said, excuse me, no, you're not gonna just stand here and not listen to me. So I got off and I made her lunge. Got back on, went around a little bit, she was doing good, and then she decided she was gonna do it again. I'm just gonna stand here and not do anything because I'm tired. Well, nope, you're not going to. So I got off again, lunged her even more, um, and basically made her run and made her work even harder because she wanted to be stubborn. And because she wanted to be a jerk, she had to work that much harder. Now, if she would have just walked and just did what I asked her to, went over a few obstacles, I probably would have just let her be done and let her stand and take a rest. But nope, she decided that she was done right now and she wasn't gonna do anything. So I made her ass work. And after that, when I kicked her to go, she went. <laughs> because she was not doing no more running. She was exhausted after that. And so the way you have to look at it is if, if, especially if you're by yourself and you don't have anyone to help you, sometimes problems can be easily solved if you have somebody to help you. So like in your situation, if you have a horse that won't walk, if you have somebody else with you that could get like a whip or a lead rope and every time your horse doesn't wanna walk, give him a little crack from behind then he walks and that solves it and then he's good. Like sometimes that's all you need to do. Um, but if you're by yourself and you're not able to do that, what I would say would be to get a lunge whip and every time your horse doesn't wanna walk, doesn't wanna move for you, make his ass lunge, make him run, make him work even harder because he decided that he wasn't gonna listen to you and he was gonna do whatever he wanted. So it just depends on the situation, but. And typically horses don't like to work hard because they're prey animals. They're designed mentally and in instinctively to conserve their energy and not to work hard if they don't have to. So if you make them work hard, they're not going to want to do that again. So that's how I usually solve those problems. How do you handle when a horse pulls back in a trailer? So I don't remember what video this was on. But that is really hard, honestly, because there's really no good way to solve the problem of pulling back. It just depends on why your horse is pulling back. Um, if you guys have been watching long enough, a couple years ago, me and Melanie went trail riding and I had my little two horse trailer, my little straight load, and BB didn't like that trailer to begin with, but she, um, would just start to back out as soon as I opened the door or I'd open it and then she'd start to back out. Um, and one time she did it and she was still tied up in the front and she was going to back out of the trailer, realized that she's stuck and she can't get out of the trailer and freaked out. She literally like just ripped back as hard as she could on the trailer and was freaking out. And yeah, that was like a whole I was really annoyed with her that day, but really you can't do much about it other than to just untie the horse or cut the rope. And that day I made her get back in the trailer, back out, get back in because she didn't want to get back in after that. Um, and really 
the only way to solidly teach a horse um, not to freak out is to get them back in the trailer as they're pulling, which is basically impossible. You'd have to like take some sort of force and push them back into the trailer to release their own pressure. And that's pretty much impossible. So the best thing I can advise is to use the butt bar. And with BB, I just stopped tying her um, because my trailer didn't have those butt bars. So I couldn't control when she started to back out. Um, so I just stopped tying her and then I would open the door and just let her back out herself. Um, if your horse, I think when I was talking to this girl who asked that question, she said her horse really just has a patience issue. He's not patient. He just wants to get out of the trailer whenever he wants. He don't care if her own, the owner's there or not. He just wants out of that trailer. So what I told her to do basically was um, use the butt bar, open the door use the butt bar so he can't back out and just leave it there for a few minutes. Leave him standing there with the door open, but he can't back out and he has to sit there and wait until she opens the butt bar so he can get out. And she said that he like will paw and bang and make all kinds of commotion in the trailer because he doesn't want to be in there and he wants to get out. And I said, girl, that is a patience problem. That is just him throwing a fit saying, get me out of this trailer. I don't want to be in here. I'm going to make all this noise so you get me out of the trailer. Well, my tough love training personally so it would say, you're going to act like that. You're going to sit in the trailer until you knock it off. So basically I advised her to keep the butt bar closed, make him stand there with the door open for for as long as you want, until he stops making commotion, until he stops banging, then let him out. Once he decides he's gonna be patient and just wait, then let him out. And to solve that issue, it's not just gonna be like overnight. If he genuinely doesn't like that trailer, let him out, put him back in. Let him out, put him back in. Do it a few different times and maybe do it a couple days a week to where he has to sit in that trailer and sit and wait until whenever you want to let him out. Whether that's the whole time you're doing chores in the barn, leave him in there, make him sit and wait, and then come back and let him out. Get him out, put him back in. And yeah, it's a long process and it's probably gonna suck and it'd be so annoying, but that's really the best way you could handle it is to teach your horse patience. If you don't have a patient horse, you're gonna run into all kinds of problems. Are all of your horses mares? <laughs> No, actually I have one lucky gelding. Um, my big sorrel gelding soccer, like you saw at the beginning of this video in the intro. Um, I have a 15-2 hand registered paint. His name is Soccer. And yeah, he's my one lucky gelding in a herd of four other mares. So yeah, lucky him. I don't know, honestly, I don't know how I got stuck with so many mares. I just really am a mare person. Um, I know like some people are just more drawn to mares and some people are more drawn to geldings. I am just a mare person. Like I love soccer, but, but riding him is definitely different than riding my mares. Any mare that I've ever ridden, I just feel like they take care of you better. And I mean, soccer kind of like tolerates me and all, but like <laughs> he's not that into it. What is your posting schedule? Whenever your girl has time, like right now, to sit down and edit a video. That's about it. That's it. that's pretty much it. <laughs> I have no posting schedule. I never have on this channel. If you guys have watched for a while, I just post whenever I can. Sometimes in the summer, I've posted like every day for like a couple weeks straight. Sometimes I post once a week. Sometimes I go like a month and I still haven't filmed a video and I'm like, oh my god. What is happening? Like I need to... <laughs> So yeah, I don't really have one, but I try and keep it regular for you guys. I try not to wait like a week at a time with you guys having nothing to watch. So I try, but homegirl has a full-time job and is in college and has five horses and has to do chores at the barn all the time and is on the fire department. And yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any other questions down below. Don't forget to check out the description box and I enjoyed this nice video outside. It was refreshing getting my morning air for the day. And now I'm gonna go back inside and watch the news. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what else you wanna see down in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.